Growth disorders are one of the most common disorders encountered by pediatricians in terms of pediatric endocrine disorders. Appropriate assessment of growth disorders is essential because on one hand, while we do not want to do unnecessary investigation in individuals who have a physiological variant short stature, we also don't want to miss somebody who has a pathological cause of growth failure. We have therefore developed a comprehensive growth interpreter as part of the MediClasses application, which provides easy and evidence-based interpretation of growth. All you have to do is just enter the various anthropometric indices of the child, including height, weight, bone age of the child, as well as parental heights. And it will automatically calculate the standard deviation scores, as well as it will also plot these indices on a growth chart. Example, so we have an eight year old boy with height of 120 centimeters, weight of 24 kgs. All we need to do is to basically place all these important data in the form of the date of birth, the weight, the mother's height, the father's height. And once we put that data along with the bone age, which can be calculated through our bone age app, we will get a number of information which are there. So if we see, we'll get the age, the height and standard deviation score, the weight and standard deviation score, the BMI and standard deviation score, which are available pretty much with a number of calculators which are available online. However, we are also providing with specific parameters like target height standard deviation score, which basically takes into account the mid parental height, the corrected height standard deviation score, which corrects the current height with regards to the parents and height standard deviation for bone age, which is correcting it for the bone age. And all of these parameters are then put into a particular algorithm which basically describes the particular condition and provides an interpretation. So as in this case, it comes as a normal growth, but it would vary depending upon what the height SD is, the BMI SD is, the corrected height SD is, and the height SD is for bone age is. So now if you use the second situation of a 12 year old girl whose height was 120 and weight was 15, she actually was found to have a normal thyroid and TTG. The hemoglobin was mildly low was found to have low IGF-1 and a low growth hormone basal based upon which a growth hormone deficiency was diagnosed. But if we put the data in a growth interpreter, what we will see is that when we see basically that the height is only 120, but the weight seems to be more affected, we'll put the uh, interpretation in terms of the mid parental height and the bone age, which is 10 years. And when we plot this chart over the curve, what we identify that this is a clearly a case of nutritional pattern growth failure as reflected by the growth charts which clearly show that the weight is more affected. So clearly in this situation the diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency should not have been entertained and a possibility of IgA deficiency which could explain the situation in terms of celiac disease uh, and a false negative TTG was considered. So this is how growth interpreter can really make a difference in terms of evaluation as was encountered in this case as well. A 10 year old boy whose height was 100, weight was 18 and based upon a TTG of 32, a diagnosis of celiac disease was considered even without a biopsy. There was no effect of gluten free diet. But if we interpret this data into our own growth interpreter, what we see is that uh, if we put all these data in terms of the height, weight and bone age, what we are seeing is that there is a significant difference in terms of the height standard deviation for bone age and it is the height which is more effective and it gives an interpretation of a endocrine pattern growth retardation. So just by putting these basic data, we can really get the guidance in terms of which way to evaluate and how to go forward. And in this case, this turned out to be a growth hormone. Uh, deficiency with a low level of growth hormone stimulation. On all this information in terms of these data of height standard deviation score, the corrected height standard deviation score, height standard deviation for bone age and BMI SDS, we have developed a clinical algorithm based upon our own clinical data of a large number of children. And this algorithm basically takes into consideration multiple aspects. The first level depends upon the level of standard deviation score. And based upon our finding that the chances of pathology increase significantly from minus 2 to minus 3 from around 2.5% below minus 2 standard deviation score of height to 42 between minus 2 to minus 3 and 
Beyond that, we have used less than minus 3 standard deviation as a criteria which requires significant evaluation in terms of pathology. Subsequent to that, uh, the next step in somebody whose height is DS is between minus 2 to minus 3 is to exclude familial short stage and for that we have used this archive paper which basically talks about height standard deviation score more than minus 1.5 as a criteria of familial short stature. After excluding familial short stature, the next issue was constitutional delay of puberty and growth. And for that, based upon our own information, we have used a height standard deviation for bone age, which is uh, more than minus 2 as an indicator of CDGP, which was observed in our data. The next big question in terms of further pathological evaluation was whether TTG needs to be done in all individuals. Our study shows that nutritional pattern growth failure is more likely to be related to celiac disease, but it is definitely not a clear-cut marker because there is an overlap, so we need to do a TTG in every individual. So, and this algorithm has then been put forward into our mobile application. So all one has to do is to put the data first on the growth interpreter, get the information and then put on the growth approach and we'll get the analysis. So if you look at this child whose height SDS is minus 3.85, Corrected height SDS is also compromised. Height standard deviation for bone age is also compromised. If we go by our approach pathway, height is less than minus 3 standard deviation score. There are no syndromic features. There is no disproportion. Screening tests were done, which was normal. The next question is, is the BMI SDS below minus 1? Yes, it was. It indicates a nutritional problem and IgA level were found to be low which clearly showed that this algorithm would really have picked up this possibility of a IgA deficiency. Now, we validated this uh, approach pathway in 625 naive patients who were not part of the initial plan as far as the algorithm was concerned. And what we found interestingly, and this 625 basically had the similar sort of a pattern and particularly because they were endocrine patients, they were more likely to be pathological cause. Two thirds of them had pathological. But the most interesting part was that 671 out of 675 patients actually had a concordant result as far as the outcome was concerned, suggesting that this app was quite valid in terms of providing guidance. Many classes app growth interpretation on your fingertips.